This video is sponsored by Squarespace. All right, so I thought we'd take it back to basics today and do an old fashioned edit with me because I just finished editing a whole slew of photos from my recent cruise with Virgin Voyages and what I'm able to do with these programs changes. And so I thought it would be interesting for you guys to see current update 2025. How do I edit my photos? What is my process? How do I store my photos? How do I back them up? How do I organize my Lightroom session? This is all of that. This is the beginning to end. So we're not gonna be editing one particular photo today we're going to be going through a few different ones to show you some of the key features and key things i look for and the tools that i reach for the most so first things first let me show you how i organize my lightroom session usually i'm editing off of an ssd and then when i'm finished with a project that's when i go and back it up to my nas but right now i've just got a bunch of these i'll have uh, the links to a few different brands that i typically use in the description box below I'm usually buying them from amazon when they're on sale sandisk would be one because they are cheaper and then you usually get a little carabiner that you can clip right there and that's fun each of these folders is a particular project so we're just gonna go into Virgin Cruise 2025. If you've watched any of my previous file organization videos, you know that I recommend you have the same filing structure for all of your projects. Sometimes I find if it's just photos, that can be a little bit overkill and you end up with all of these different folders that are kind of unnecessary. So if it's just a project that has <laughs> photography, then this is typically what it looks like. So we've got raw, which would be all of your raw photos. You have exports, which would be all of your final exports. And this that just says Virgin Cruise 2025, that's where my Lightroom session is. Within RAW, I have each camera, and depending on how long your trip is and if it's important for you to document which date you took what photo, you can also do it day by day if you're backing up by day, but I didn't take a ton of photos every single day, so I just dumped them into three big folders. So now with that said, let's jump into the Lightroom session. I prefer to have one catalog per project. Otherwise, I just find it really overwhelming with all the photos that are in there. That's just the way I like to do it. When you open up your Lightroom catalog and you've got all these photos from your vacation that you need to dump and it's really overwhelming. So by giving myself a process and kind of an order of operations, it makes it a lot less overwhelming for me. And I kind of have these checkpoints that I know if I get through this, this will take this long. If I get through this, this will take this long. And mentally, I understand how far I am in the editing process. So I comb through everything and I like to add it to my quick collection. So that's what this little circle is up there. And to add it to your quick collection, you can either click that little circle or you can hit B and it says add to quick collection. So I pretty much just scroll through these with arrow keys. Obviously these are all not very good. Here we go. Now the parrot starts to look decent. And obviously this was one I chose. This is already edited. Go through them. When you see one you like, you hit B, it adds it to the quick collection and you can keep moving. I know we can be very precious with our photos. Go with your gut and like the speed I'm going through them, that one's good, that one's not. When you see one that catches your eye, add it to the quick collection. You can always comb through it a second time and it makes it a lot easier to sift through or decide between two photos later on rather than the five or 10 or 20 that you took of that one subject. So to go into that quick collection, I usually just right click around here, hit quick collection and now you have, selection of all of your favorite photos. Sometimes I'm saving multiple for a particular subject, as you can see, because this one's horizontal, this one's vertical, depending on what I need these photos for. Right now, the first thing I needed was an Instagram post to kind of share what happened on my trip. And how I like to separate those into their own category is I give those photos a rating. You have all of your photos, quick collection, top favorites. You following me? So the top favorites, I give them a rating. You can give them one, two, three, four, or five stars. If they're going into my favorites category, I'm giving it five stars. If it's a close second, I'm giving it four, but I don't like to have too many of these like mental folders set aside. Just, I like to do the one favorites and then the quick collection. Again, this is how my brain works. It's personal preference at the end of the day. So to do that, you would literally just hit five and it says set rating to five. And in order to see those photos all at once, over here, you can see where it says filter. 
you can either click rated or unrated, or you can select two, three, four, and five to see the different rated photos. So these are all of my five star photos and many of these you will see on Instagram. If you do not follow me on Instagram, please do. It's at Lizzie Pierce. I post pictures and reels and post pretty much all of the updates on like group trips and my mentorship program and all of the things that I offer there. So maybe you follow that too, that's all. So now that we talked about organization, let's talk about how I actually edit these. Also enjoy how embarrassing this is. You enjoying this video? Cool. Couple things I'm gonna ask you to do then. One, maybe subscribe to my channel. Uh, two, listen to me talk about Squarespace for a minute. Thanks. I used Squarespace to make my website. I legitimately did, even before they paid me to do this ad. The template I chose was clean and stylish, and I literally built it myself. I really struggle with design, but Squarespace made it super easy for me to showcase my portfolio beautifully. The platform is super easy for me to customize, update regularly, and I can get analytics about the purchases made on my digital products through my online store. And I run my own business, so I don't have time to learn a whole new platform. All right, so head over to Squarespace for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, you can use this code right here to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thanks Squarespace. Now back to the video. Okay, so here's the edited version of this series of photos. So you can see where we got. And what I'm trying to emphasize with this photo is first of all, like it's gonna look a little underexposed to you. There are some adjustments already made on it, but that's because it was a little underexposed to make sure that I could retain the highlights in the sunset and in the sky behind me. So that meant I was a little darker, but I was confident with my camera that I would be able to bring up these shadows and clean up any noise later on, which is pretty much what I did. My initial assessment of an image when I first look at it is, okay, what is the subject and how do I draw my eye to the subject and how do I detract focus from all of the distracting elements? So in this case, my initial assessment shows that I'm quite dark, the background's quite dark, this extra tree over here is bothering me, this light over here that's under the railing is bothering me, as well as finding an initial preset to start with. The pack of presets I'm typically reaching for these days and have for the last two years are from my Kodiak preset pack and my vintage preset pack. And there's another one in here called LP Mocha, and I have two variations of it just for myself. That preset you can buy separately, it's only $5, and that is one of my favorites. And it was made after those two packs, but I use it so often. It's very my style right now. And I can't wait to produce a whole other pack for you. You don't even need one if you don't want, but it just saves me time when editing. Some photos I do start from scratch if the photo requires it, but normally I'm throwing on one of these. So I think I went with Raffia. So sometimes I like to hit shift and I double click on exposure just to see where the program believes the correct exposure should be. So it brought it up by 0.9 and then lately, I've been just really bringing up the shadows, which seems like such an old technique to do. But with this photo, in order for me to see myself, the background, the sunset, we have to bring up the shadows to even that out quite a bit. So I need to see more of the sky and the sun behind me, but the shadows are already brought down quite a bit. So in this case, this is when I start my masking fun. So before we get into that, I mentioned trying to remove some distracting elements. So I'm going to remove this other tree. Let's work on bringing down this hot spot over here. Now really the only good way to do this is gonna be with a brush. You can see what bringing the whites down does. It's kind of working. You can see what bringing the highlights down does. That's also kind of working. And so it seems dark enough, but it's this warm color that's really distracting. Whereas over here, obviously it's dark and then the pattern in the railing is white. So I'm gonna desaturate it. And that has in fact made a difference is great. As you saw, I kind of colored over my hair in order to remove that by holding down option. And you can see that would remove it entirely. But we're gonna use like the edge of it here to kind of diffuse what I'm doing. That looks pretty good. A few other masks I'm gonna reach for are the Select Sky. 
And I love that AI does this now because we used to have to paint this completely ourselves and that was a pain in the butt. So you can bring down the highlights a little bit more. I do want to bring out the color, so I'm going to saturate this guy. But really only what's coming out is this yellow line here and I want more color. This is the moment I'm going to reach for a linear gradient. And things to keep in mind is you don't have to necessarily apply it right to that area. If you want a more subtle fade, you can pull it a bit longer and then back it up. But for this, that should work out okay. And I like to tint it, not necessarily pink, but like a peachy reddish color. Pretty good to me. I do think that the whole image needs to be warmed up quite a bit, and that's probably going to affect the sunset now. So obviously that's very warm. You could also do this in your color grading with your highlights. Now we're really getting that like sunny sunset feeling. And just the saturation a little bit on the sunset now because we've just warmed up the whole image. Now I'm gonna add another linear gradient mask just on the bottom of the image here because I don't need to see so much of this table. It's a little distracting. It would just add more drama if I could darken it somewhat. I like linear gradients for the corners. You could also use a radial one here. There are no wrong answers, guys. Probably gonna use a radial one too. Now there's a lot more focus on myself as the subject here. Okay, that's looking pretty good. But I don't think that I pop as much as I want. I wanna see more contrast. I want my skin to look glowier. I want my hair to be brighter. I want my dress to be brighter. I just wanna be able to see more of that contrast because right now I'm kind of the same dimension as the background. So let me show you what I mean by that. Usually, easiest thing to do is I start by selecting myself as the subject. And the thing about selecting people versus selecting subject is the AI is gonna make its best determination if you click selecting subject as to what the subject is of the image. So it might be you, it might be also the background, but selecting people, it's masked out the people in the image and all of the different features on your body. The ones I probably use the most would definitely be hair. And I like to brighten it a little bit. Sometimes I'll do that with the exposure. I'll increase the highlights a little bit, but I'll also mess with the contrast a little bit. The texture, see how much you wanna add. That's really nice and soft. That's a lot of texture, but it, it's all these things that help me stand out from the background which I've raised the shadows on. So now if we click select subject, it's done a pretty good job of selecting me, but it did bleed over into a bit of the railing and the seat and the pillow. So I just wanna remove that and I'm gonna do it with the brush tool. And typically what I do here is I raise the exposure a little bit. I like to adjust the clarity. I'm gonna bring up the highlights. We're going to bring down the blacks a little bit, add a little bit more contrast. The whites, let's bring up those a little bit. Yeah, so already that's looking pretty good. And then the last thing I would do here is just take the brush tool and do a little bit of dodge and burning. And for brightening certain areas, I would just increase the exposure very little. Use a really fluffy brush and just go over some of these parts that I want to highlight. I actually have a very old video about kind of contouring your photos or contouring your portraits because I know a lot of you men watching, you don't necessarily know what contouring is and that's essentially dodging and burning. And it's just adding, yeah, more contrast, more of that glowiness to your photo. Yeah, that's roughly the final image here. But something else I do wanna talk about. So let's find my photo of the cruise ship here. So this is the before. And there's typically a lot of things you need to remove in an image. You can actually do this in Lightroom now with the remove little eraser tool. You can use generative AI and it's a simpler version of generative fill, but I find you get better results and more control over using generative fill in Photoshop. So I did bring this over to Photoshop and removed the other two boats. And really how I did that is just by right clicking, you go to edit in and then Photoshop, the photo will open 
in Photoshop. And it's just a matter of selecting using like the different selection tools. So you could use polygonal lasso tool. That was my favorite one to go around this and just set little points around all of these sharp parts of the virgin boat in order to get this middle boat out. The first one was pretty easy, but it made this harsh line. And then I just started taking chunks and using generative fill because that's just faster. So if you're not great with Photoshop and you're not the best with retouching and removing things from images, this is a great way to do that. Then all you do is hit Command S for save and it saves that into Lightroom and then I export from here. But I do all of my color adjustments and all of my masks and all of my brushing. I do all of that before I remove things. Head over to your quick collection or to your rated collection, highlight all of them, hit export or command shift E, and you can see I've selected my export folder here. I like to give them a custom name and the original file number in case I need to know where the original file is. This is my special formula. I prefer it this way because I'm not typically doing different versions of the same photo, but I do often need to figure out which was the raw file. I export as a JPEG because most of these are getting posted on Instagram and I don't need a massive file size for that, but this is going to be quite large, large enough not to have any compression in any of like the gradients in the sky and things like that. I have the quality set really high. Do you need it that high? Probably not, but it's what I have it set at. This looks good to me. If I were doing a higher quality export, if it had to be printed, I would use different settings for that. And then you would just hit export. So that is the gist. That is how I'm editing my photos these days. If you guys have any questions or you want to see me edit any particular style of photo from beginning to end let me know in the comments below otherwise i will see you guys in the next one by the way if you haven't heard and haven't been following me on instagram spots for my japan trip are selling out we are going to be closing the doors on that trip very soon it's a trip to japan with me and a bunch of other awesome people i organize group trips so far every year and if you would like to come please reserve your spot the details for that will be in the description below but there isn't a whole lot of time to reserve it so i would do that very quickly if you want to see the details on that. I'll also have the link to the itinerary in the description too. Thanks guys. Bye.